welcome to our Friday, March 24, 2017 edition of the Government News Brief. In the news this evening, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs refutes claims of threat against Justice Franklin. The government holds second consultation on draft Petroleum Commission bill and baby heart care to be expanded amid success stories. These and other stories when the news returns. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us. I am Renetta LaFleur. Here are the details. The Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Basil Williams, refutes claims that he threatened Justice Franklin during a recent court session. Details in this Seneca Thorne report. The Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Basil Williams, today clarified statements made by former Attorney General Anil Nandlal that he threatened Judge Justice Franklin during a court proceedings involving Carvel Duncan on March 23. The issue was also reported by various news outlets. The Attorney General says that at no time did he threaten the judge and sees the accusation as an attack on his character and by extension the government. At no time was the magistrate threatened. There was no reason for the learned magistrate, who was a, a schoolmate of mine, to feel threatened by me. So to, to subsequently see that this allegation is made by Mr. Nandelan and posted on his website, uh, on his page, and it's actually adopted by Kaisha News and by Guyana Times, who never called the Attorney General of this country. I think it's such a disrespectful act and is an attack against this government. Minister Williams explains that just as he wrapped up questioning a witness in the case, as the judge was leaving the bench, he inquired whether the answer of the witness had been recorded. The judge then questioned him about whether he was the one in charge of the court, to which he answered no. The judge then said to me, um, Mr. Williams, I, I interpret what you're saying to mean that I deliberately did not record the yes answer that you said was given by the witness previously. And um, I take great umbrage at that. And I said, sir, surely that is not on your record because I never said anything to that effect or intended anything like that. I say, you know, as a matter of fact, that reminds me of some years ago of a similar allegation made by a magistrate that he interpreted my words to mean that he failed exams and wasn't successful at his exams because I said, in response to his um, assertion, is that how they taught you at law school? I said yes, and I never failed a subject. And so the next few days when I returned to him, he said he interpreted that to mean that I was saying I passed, but he failed. And I said, well, of course. He cited me for contempt, and the rest is history. And I said, since then, I've always been very particular about what I see to the courts. Minister Williams said he intends to take legal action against the former Attorney General Anil Nandlal and those media outlets that carry the false accusation, including Kaito News and the Guyana Times. For the Government News Brief, Sneaka Thorne reporting. Stakeholders from the oil and gas industry and civil society made their input in the draft Petroleum Commission bill today. Tiffany Rodias tells us more. The consultation was hosted by the Ministry of Natural Resources. The Petroleum Commission Bill makes provision for the establishment of a Petroleum Commission to serve as a regulatory agency for Guyana's oil and gas industry. At today's consultation, stakeholders raised concerns and queries on the establishment of the board, powers of the minister and remuneration of staff. Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Trotman, notes that the appointment of the board will be inclusive. A chairperson appointed by the Minister, Director of Petroleum, the Director of Petroleum, and not more than seven other persons who shall comprise representatives of the parliamentary opposition and uh, civil society. Minister Trotman says the bill will be presented at the next sitting of Parliament, which is scheduled for April. The hope is that we will have the bill, as I said, in Parliament in April, in a few weeks and have it before select committee where it will be further examined and we can receive presentations on its improvement and uh, we certainly would like to have it passed into law by mid by August before we go into our recess that is the intention because things are happening at a rapid pace 
and we need to get this law in place as soon as possible. The bill is consistent with existing regulatory agencies in the local extractive sector, but also draws from similar commissions in Africa and Trinidad and Tobago, Minister Trotman notes. For the Government News Brief, Tiffany Rogers. International Children's Heart Foundation is looking to expand their service of baby heart surgeries with the support of the Ministry of Public Health. Delisi Haynes has the details. The team of cardiologists from the International Children's Heart Foundation, commonly known as the Baby Heart Foundation, has engaged with the government to expand its baby heart care services. These services are being offered at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Pediatric cardiologist Dr. Rodrigo Soto says the number of baby heart surgeries conducted is increasing, hence the need for the expansion. There are many things that we've been discussing with the Ministry of Health and with GPAC in order to even expand our unit, uh, the intensive care unit to double the capacity in order to uh, um, accommodate more patients. Since we've been increasing the complexity of um, our cases. The Baby Heart Foundation with the Guyana Program to Advance Cardiac Care GPAC is working towards having more healthcare professionals trained to perform surgical procedures and cardiac care on an expanded basis. Our goals are not to just come here and do things. Our goals are to actually work with the local uh, health care team and increase their skills to allow sustainability of these programs. My goal, I've always said, is that at some point people will say, well, you don't actually have to come and work here anymore. We can do it on our own. Come and visit, but we don't need you to do the work. Meanwhile, cardiologist of GPAC, Dr. Deborah Isaacs, says that the overall health care has continually developed over the years through the support from GPAC and the Baby Heart Foundation. We have got to the point where the echo lab, the treadmill lab, and the cardiac ICU are actually still continuing to work when we're not here. We're here frequently to provide support and to provide increased education and to provide increased service and we're always available, we're in contact all the time online, but they're actually running the service uh, really on their own. The Baby Heart Foundation's first mission for 2017 will perform 14 open heart surgeries on children between the ages of 5 months to 17 years old. The team is expected to make a total of four visits for the year and is aiming for a targeted 100% success rate. For the Government News Brief, Delicia Haynes. The Small Business Bureau, in collaboration with several ministries, has initiated a youth entrepreneurship program for at-risk youths. Gabriela Patram tells us more. The Youth Biz 592 program is targeting 40 youths ranging from ages 18 to 25 from Sophia Georgetown and Angoys Avenue, New Amsterdam, Burbies. This program evolved through collaboration among the Ministries of Public Security, Education, the Department of Culture, Youth and Sport, the U.S.-based Youth Bill Link, and the Small Business Bureau. Officer in charge of the Bureau, Jillian Edwards, says that the aim of the program is to keep youths out of possible negative activities. The youths include those who have been abused, school dropouts, and teenage mothers. Edwards says the program also helps guide the youths into entrepreneurship. This is a very complex project in the sense that in addition to youth entrepreneurship being the focus, in, a, in order to address all those needs, we have support that includes psychosocial support, literacy, parenting skills, um, and of course there's a gender focus for the project. So it, it, it's, it's complex. It's uh, multifaceted and the hope is at the end of the day that we steer them towards creating their own jobs. In some instances, they already have their own businesses, so this is an opportunity for them to expand. Edwards adds that there is a grant component to the program. She explains that the Small Business Bureau offers support in this initiative through daycare support and stipends for transportation. Edwards describes the sessions as interactive and the content of the modules are simple to understand. This program is expected to, um, the duration is three and a half months, it's very short term, it's a pilot project. So we're hoping, you know, based on the, what comes out of this, that it can be some uh, an expanded program thereafter. Edward says that the USA company is the lead expert on this program, especially in entrepreneurship. Additionally, they are local experts from the Ministry of Education. Youth Bill, as I said, signed a contract with Ministry of Public Security. Public Security, in turn, contracted the Small Business Bureau to implement this program. 
and of course because we're not the experts in anything beyond entrepreneurship we in turn um, collaborated in terms of a MOU signed with the Ministry of Education for the other aspects of the program which is the parenting skills the psychosocial support leadership and liter literacy skills so that is MOE's input SBB is entrepreneurship as well as the entire in terms of the financial management and implementation of the program. The program, which began on March 13, is scheduled to run for three months. For the government news brief, Gabriella Batram. The Linden Mayor and Town Council is seeking to push a twinning initiative to attract investors to the mining town. Find out more from Zanil Williams. Mayor of Linden, Kerwin Holland, says this initiative will create an influx of much-needed jobs for the youths in this town. We're looking for jobs and Lindeners are willing and eager to learn. When you can have one of the largest gold mining company in Suriname come into to Linden to find workers, it tells you about our human resource. When you can have companies, mining companies coming from, from different parts of the world or in the country self and looking particularly for Lindeners to be employed, it tells you something about the people. They are skilled and we but we are lacking jobs. And we need this assistance. In order to get such going, we would need um, investment um, in Linden. Bosai alone cannot um, cannot do. The twinning initiative is the teaming up of two or more like-minded persons and or organizations to create businesses and development opportunities. The mayor and town council is promoting this initiative and has had some success in attracting investors to Linden. There were several meetings with embassies and organizations to explore possibilities of developing businesses. Mayor Holland explains that some red tape is hindering the process. So far we've been successful, we've been vocal and we've had several companies come into Linden um, looking at we, um, different um, initiatives, you know, uh, business initiatives in the mining tongue. However, we have a problem where when they've left there, then person's got to go to maybe go invest and so on. And that's where the challenge comes. So persons may okay this um, in investment initiative, but you get a little stymie when you have to go back to certain institutions. So I'm calling for a cutoff of this, um, this, this bottleneck if I may use that word, um, so that we can have a one-stop shop to investment and development in Linden. President David Granger has said Linden has potential for business development. He is calling for the return of the alumina plant and feasibility studies to realize this have begun. Government has also been ensuring that the youths are given work-ready training through institutions such as the Linden Technical Institute, Linden Nursing School, and programs such as the Board of Industrial Training, BIT. Today, March 24, is annually observed as World Tuberculosis Day. It is celebrated under the theme, United to End TB. Staff of the National Tuberculosis Program gather today at Carol Lodge to learn more of the End TB strategy by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, WHO, which has been adopted by the Ministry of Public Health. Minister within the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummins, says tuberculosis is now known to be the world's leading infectious disease. To prevent the transmission of TB, there needs to be intensified awareness, especially within the hinterland, while the training of healthcare workers will aid in ensuring that the more detected TB cases are reached and treated effectively. This has been another edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. We encourage you to subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. You can also like and follow us on Facebook to be updated as the news unfolds. Do join us again on Monday for another edition of the Government News Brief. I am Renette LaFleur. Thank you for watching.